Hello and welcome to Codex Lee. My name is Lee and this is a channel all about books. Uh, it's so good to be back. I'm sorry I've been away for so long. I, I didn't have any internet for a whole month, which really sucked. Uh, and I'm really excited today to talk about a book I read recently, and that's Let the Right One In by Jon Avide Linskvist. Fryser inte? Nej. Varför det? Jag har väl glömt hur man gör. When you're writing a vampire's tale, it can be difficult to sustain a reader's interest in the human characters. After all, absent fathers and aging alcoholics sound far less exciting than blood-sucking undead creatures of the night with superhuman powers. But the thing is, Lindvist has populated his contemporary vampire tale Let the Right One In with several ordinary people struggling with ordinary problems. And it succeeds because of those people and not in spite of them. Of course, that's partly true of another famous contemporary vampire novel, Salem's Lot. But what makes Let the Right One In superior to Salem's Lot, in my view, is that the vampire in Let the Right One In is both more unsettling and far more interesting than the vampire menacing Salem's Lot. Like in Salem's Lot, the location of Let the Right One In is just as important as the characters who inhabit it. In fact, the preface is titled location of Blackburg, and proceeds to describe a place without a past. Lindvist writes, You were beyond the grasp of the mysteries of the past. There wasn't even a church. 9,000 inhabitants and no church. Although the book is set in Norway in the early 1980s, the somewhat soulless suburban environment is probably familiar to a lot of readers, and it's into this hollowed out existence that um, Ellie and Hakan move their few belongings. Ellie looks about the same age as her 12-year-old neighbour, Oscar, and the two of them begin to form a friendship of sorts as they get to know each other in the desolate spaces around the apartment block that they live in. Oscar has been bullied at school, but he finds an inner strength via Ellie, and he moves from play-acting uh, violent revenge scenarios into actually fighting back. Ellie, like Oscar, is different. Ellie uses idiosyncratic phrases, seems completely unaffected by the freezing conditions outside, and moves with a somewhat impossible agility. Oscar's realisation that his new friend is a vampire emerges gradually, and this isn't the only hidden identity Ellie reveals that challenges Oscar. This is one of the real strengths of the book, because as Oscar grows to uh, accept Ellie in light of new revelations, he's also grappling with his own identity, both in relation to his parents and his oppressors at school. Beyond these two central protagonists, Lindvist has uh, created a constellation of supporting characters. Hakan is arguably the closest thing the book has to an antagonist. First as Ellie's incompetent provider in the earlier parts of the book, whose lustful thoughts about young boys paints him as equal parts pathetic and predatory, and then later as something much more grotesque in form. The way that Ellie is humanised means that the true horror of the book is to be found in Hakan, and particularly in a sequence that occurs towards the end of the book, uh, which takes place in the confines of a dark cellar, which unsurprisingly didn't make it into the 2008 film adaptation. In fact, the film chose to excise Hakan entirely before he degenerates into what the book has in store for him. And then there are the neighbourhood drunks, although to refer to them as that is to do a disservice to a group of characters who Lindvist neither glorifies nor dismisses. Lackey, Virginia um, and their social circle represent a group of characters that I rarely read about in, in other works of popular fiction, namely older, limited, financially, uh, socially ostracised people and whose own loyalties to each other are, are even questionable at times. They're not strictly sympathetic because they're not entirely likeable, but we spend a lot of time with them in this book and we come to understand them via the combination of anger and shame that paradoxically binds them as a group but also alienates them from one another. This is a, a slight spoiler, um, but for those of you who've read Dracula, Virginia plays the role of Lucy Westerner in this particular book. Uh, like Lucy from Dracula, Virginia is forced to come to terms with uh, an ailment that affects her body and her mind. Uh, and like Lucy, she is cared for um, by a group of people who mean well, um, but really can't do much to help her, uh, including her on and off lover. Um, but the comparisons really end there. 
Unlike Lucy, uh, Virginia is an older woman from a working class background, and instead of simply enduring her uh, new and unwelcome existence, uh, she reclaims a sense of agency. Now, the story of Virginia and Lackey and the others at first seems like a subplot, uh, which perhaps helps to contextualize the central narrative, um, but without meaningfully intersecting it. But Lindfist um, cleverly pulls all the narrative threads together as the book reaches its climax uh, and the true horror is unleashed. Uh, and by that point, we're fully immersed in the reasons why a penniless old drunk feels compelled to murder a child. Uh, and that immersion in the complex psychology of these various different characters leaves us somewhat conflicted about who it is that we're rooting for. With the exception of Hakan, of course. Nobody's rooting for Hakan. Let the Right One In is a dark and dense novel that is far more than just a typical vampire tale. Uh, I'm going to quote from its Wikipedia page here, but this helpfully lists many of the themes that this book explores. Um, existential anxiety, social isolation, fatherlessness, divorce, alcoholism, school bullying, paedophilia, genital mutilation, self-mutilation, and murder. Um, to that list, I would add... Uh, gender identity, um, trauma, obsession, um, but there's so much going on beneath the surface that it's really hard to list all the different themes involved. Of course, the, the danger in describing the book this way is to make it sound like less of a page turner than it actually is. And uh, let me assure you that you can enjoy Let the Right One In purely as a Scandinavian horror with uh, really fleshed out characters uh, and some gross out moments. But if you want something more though, then it has plenty more going on as I've described and I have no hesitation in describing it as the best vampire book I've read and probably the best horror novel I have read to date. If you've seen the film and you think that there's no value in reading the book because you know what happens, then there actually is tremendous value. I'd seen the film beforehand, then I read the book um, and I got so much out of it. Um, um, but if you haven't seen the film, I also recommend watching that too. It's a brilliant adaptation, the original Swedish version. Um, but just don't pass up the opportunity to read the source material, because trust me, you won't regret it.